broadcasting the good news of Jesus Christ to North America and people around the world. We welcome you to TCT Alive. Our faithful prayer partners are here to take your important calls. So join us today for an inspirational time of interview and song. TCT Alive. Now, join us for this special presentation. Wow, praise the Lord. I'm telling you, God is a wonderful, wonderful God. He is still performing miracles in 2012. I mean, listen, I'm excited. I mean, real excited. Why? For several reasons. You decided to tune in to TCT Alive, and I already know that God did not have you tune in by accident. It is by divine providence that you are flipping that channel. But don't flip it no more. You have reached your destination. I'm Anthony Shannon, pastor of Beyond the Veil. International Christian Church will be your host today on TCT Alive. Listen, I want you to stay tuned because I'm telling you, it's going to be a fantastic show. God will do something for you like He's never done. Listen, TCT have been existing for 35 years. We want to give God all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. I thank Him for Dr. Garth and Tina Kuntz. I'm telling you, they heard a word from the Lord to do something for God. And let me tell you something, whenever you do something for God, the devil is always fighting, but they lasted. And let me tell you, this is good ground. You want to sow a seed, you want to plant something in the ground and get a return, do it with TCT. Listen, at the same time, call your mother, call your brother, call your friend, call your neighbors, even call your enemy, and let them know to tune in right now. Also, I want you to know that at the bottom of the screen, there's a number. Well, that's, that's a serious number, because I want you to call that number if you need God in on any of your situations. You got a challenge. You got something that you need wisdom on. You just need to call the number. The prayer partners are waiting. They will put their faith with your faith. And let me tell you something, God will show up. And when he does, all I ask you to do is call back the number and give us a praise report. Do you know the Bible says, if two or three of you would touch and agree on any such thing, not doubt in your heart, but believe that you receive, you'll have whatsoever you say. Well, listen, our prayer partners, they're anointed. So call the number right now. Also, do you know that the Bible began to tell us a uh, long time ago that what would take place in our day today? He began to tell us that we would see wars and rumors of wars and we would have earthquakes and famine in diverse places. He also began to tell us that men would not be listening to sound doctrine, that they would not be able to hear the word of God and that many would fall away. Why, but, but then he goes to tell us in Matthew 24, but don't worry, don't panic. The end ain't coming yet. <laughs> well, listen, my guest today is Apostle Keith Barr. He's a pastor. He is an apostle, but most importantly, he's a child of God. We're co-laborers in the gospel together, but he's my guest, and we want to welcome him. He is no stranger to TCT, does so many things for, the, for TCT and for the Lord, but I want you to welcome him just like you would any other great man of God. Welcome, Apostle Keith Barr. Amen. Appreciate you, man. God bless Appreciate you, you coming on here today. Thank you. Now, you know, you're no stranger to TCT. Uh, God has done great things with you. But before we get into the books and whatnot, let's talk about you, your ministry, how long you've been doing ministry. Uh, I know you've traveled all around, but let's just talk. How did you even get to God? How did, how did, how did God arrest you? Well, actually, my first thought that I remember, mm -hmm. I was probably three or four years old. And at uh, that time I was living in the projects in Pontiac mm -hmm. and uh, I was outside walking and I remember the Lord telling me uh, that my parents didn't go to church. You know, uh, my, fa my mother might go sometime very okay. frequently, but my father was into numbers and he was picking up for the mob. Mm -hmm. And so he wasn't church going person at all. And uh, so uh, the Lord spoke to me and, uh, and told me that I was called. Mm and that my life was, I was not here to serve myself, but I was here, then what he would have me do would be a blessing to people all over the world. And he told me that the worst thing that could ever possibly happen to me was if I died and I had not reached millions of people. Wow. And uh, that he said, he emphasized that several times, that's the worst thing that could ever happen to you 
that you wouldn't, if people were dying, millions wouldn't know your name, that you haven't reached them. Hmm. And, uh, and so, you know, years later, the Lord began to, to, to deal with me. Mm -hmm. uh, when I remember one time I was five and I was just curious about God. Neither one of my parents were still in church. And uh, uh, I was asking my mother about God and I said, what will God, you know, what will God do? What will he do with prayer? My mom said, oh, he'll do anything, anything <laughs> you ask him. And I said, anything? So she said, yes, anything. So I'm five years old, you know. I've got younger sisters. I mean, if I was a kid, one more than anything, a friend. <laughs> you know, so I, I ran upstairs to my room. I was excited. And so in my, in my mind, I'm thinking, I'm going to ask God to be my friend, and we're going to come down, and maybe we're going to play jacks or do something like that. <laughs> like that. That's what I was thinking at the time. Mm -hmm. You know, as a five-year-old, sure, sure. and I closed the door, excited, and I said, I said, Lord, I want to talk to you, and I want you to talk to me. And I said, and I want to get to know you, and I want you to get to know me. And I want to be your friend, and I want you to be mine. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, it was like, you know how in Michigan, when you can open the winter, mm -hmm. open, open the door in the winter, That's right. and all that environment comes right. inside, mm -hmm. just like that. You can, the, all the heat can go out just like that. Sure. It was like a window was open in heaven. <laughs> And heaven was poured into my room mm. and it was cold waves going all throughout my body. Mm -hmm. And I just, and, and as those waves swept over me, it was waves of peace <laughs> and compassion and contentment. And really to use those words is really an insult to what sure. I was feeling. It was like a thousand times more uh, contentment and sure. peace that you could ever feel. And it was so wonderful that I never wanted to do anything else again. <laughs> I never wanted to play. I never wanted to go outside. I never. Wanted, I just wanted to bask in their presence, and I hoped it would last always. Mm -hmm. I thought about calling my mother, but I felt like that would interrupt it. <laughs> I wanted her to experience it, mm -hmm. and I, I, I wanted it to last forever. And and, uh, um, but I knew it wouldn't. And then the Holy Spirit spoke to me, and He said, "You know, God has a book of life where He writes down everything you do." from the time you were born to the time that you die. Mm. And then it began to lift. And so I went downstairs and told, my, my, when my mother saw the spirit on me and she sure. saw me She knew you were crying. looking different, something right, happened, right, right, she's like, right. what's going on? And she was scared, you know. <laughs> okay. So she called her, her grandmother, you know, and ah. the grandmother told us, she said, that's, that's in the Bible, that's revelation, <laughs> you know, and so she said, you know, that boy must be called, you know, and say, so you're going to have to be careful how you uh, mm -hmm. handle him. Mm -hmm. And so about a year later, my mother got saved. You know? Wow. Yeah. So so, um, so you led your mother to the Lord. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So um, which actually she started going to church mm -hmm. trying to get a number. Okay. But what they she was trying to get those, a number. <laughs> right, right. Because they was into a deep, deep, got, deep <laughs> scriptures. That, oh, I got that one. All right. And so uh, she got saved and she got filled with the Holy Ghost. And, wow. And so when she took me, I had been to other churches, but I'd never been to a spirit-filled church. Okay. And when I walked in that church. Something leaped in you. For the first time in my life, I felt like I was home. Wow. You know, and my father. Now, how old were you then? Six. Six, okay. And my, my father was, at that time, between, he was, a, he was a pool shark and a number man. Okay. So in 1963, he was making between a grand and two grand a month. Wow. In 63. In 63. He carried, you know, my, my daddy like was the wide. man in the streets, you know. <laughs> yes, sir. You know, and, and he was a um, dark skinned guy. Uh, okay. You, you know, uh, you know, nice hair. Everybody, everybody sure, just sure. loved him. You know, okay. he was the man, you know. Right. And I wanted to be him. You know, okay. he's a tough little guy. Some people saw him as like a black James Cagney. <laughs> oh, wow. Know? And so, uh, because he carried his pistol in his pocket, okay, you know. Okay. I mean, that's what they've told me, you know. Uh, yeah, I got you. And so I wanted to be like him. Sure. You know, I love my father. He loved me. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, but when I went to that service. Wow. I never wanted to be like daddy again. Wow. You know, and so I, 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 uh, I looked at the preacher and how God was using him. Mm -hmm. And with the natural eye, it was nothing sure. that could compare sure. to my father. Mm-hmm. My father was better looking. My father had more mm -hmm. money. He had mm -hmm. better clothes. Sure. You know, the preacher was overweight. My right. dad, you know, he, he like a horse but never gained weight. Right, right. <laughs> and so um, 
I didn't take after him. I took sure. after Mama's side. <laughs> and so, uh, um, um, but you know, I, when I, when I w we went in there, sat down, the Lord spoke to me. He said, you know, He said, "This is," and I looked at the preacher. He said, "This is what you were called to be." Wow. You know. Wow. And so, um, and so I remember uh, a little bit later, one of my relatives who was a teacher, mm -hmm. uh, my mother's cousin, she asked me, she said, what do you want to be when you grow up? And so, she, you know, she was all excited. <laughs> right. You know, <laughs> but then when I said preacher, she wouldn't wow. dismiss me. Wow. You know, and she said, oh, uh, you don't know what you want to be. I That's said, what I she said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And wow. so I said, I do know what I'm, I want to be. I know what I'm going to be. Wow. You know? And so I was never, I was raised to never disrespect. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But it was just something in me just rose up. I'm going to be a preacher. <laughs> you know? And so, uh, because I knew God had called me and laid his hand upon me. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, you know, I love the ministry. I've been preaching since, I, since 1974. There's wow. nothing that I'd rather do. Wow. Now let me you ask know? you this question, Apostle, when you said that, you said, told her you wanted to be a preacher, and she mm -hmm. dismissed that. Is that the mindset, or was that the mindset of people then and today that they don't look like? I mean, they don't they don't think the the vocation of pastor or preacher is nothing. Why is that, and is it the same? It's worse today. Okay, it's worse. It's, today. it's worse today. Okay. It was bad then, you know, because she was, you know, she was a teacher. Right. She was a very uh, I guess you could say, call it, cause herself aristocratic or whatever sure. type person. Mm -hmm. And uh, I remember when, uh, when uh, you know, I was known in school for for being very bright. Okay. 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 And so. Um, so do you think that when God came into your room that day, mm -hmm. and you felt what you felt, mm -hmm. and you, it's undescribable. You don't even right. have the words, but to the best of your ability, that's it. Right. Do you believe God shadowed you? not only with his presence, but he, inf he infilled you so that you could vastly intellectually receive and perceive ahead of the game of right. anyone else, sort of like right. Daniel. Right, around the same time I was watching um, a sci-fi movie. Okay. You know, in uh, some of flying saucers and stuff, sure. and I looked at it, and I realized, I said to myself, the world is changing. <laughs> and you know, where science is gonna be more important. Wow. And I says, and you I, said that then, right, 1963. Mm -hmm. And I said, I want to be a man of science. Wow. In the midst of our world dealing with diversity and we got civil rights fight, right. you say it. Not only I'm gonna be a preacher, right, but, but I'm, I'm be a man of science. <laughs> That's awesome. That's and, awesome. And so, uh, you know, as science has always fascinated me. Mm -hmm. You know, I would, you know, <laughs> the more complicated it was, the better you right. know, it was for me. And so, you know, sometimes I used to feel, okay, how am I going to incorporate this into the ministry? Right. <laughs> is, is there a Would place they for receive this? receive it, right? Right, right. And so, as, as a matter of fact, I remember when I was 18 and I had just got ordained at 18 and, um, and it was in the paper and everything. And one of the, the friends, the mother of one of my friends, you know, because everybody knew, I was one of the top students in school. Sure. And so um, uh, she said, uh, well, what are you doing now? I told her I was in the ministry. And first she didn't have an expression, then the expression <laughs> turned to disgust. Whoa. And she said to me, she said, all those brains going to waste. Wow. That was her interpretation right. of what you told her. Right, right. Wow. That's amazing. Now, why do you think that is? I mean, I know you've got books on it and we're going to get to that, but just why do you think that is? Because it, you said it's worse today. Right, right. <laughs> It's worse today because uh, uh, the secularization of our society. Mm -hmm. uh, people want to take God out of our society, mm -hmm. you know. The and they're using, they have used science <laughs> to do it to justify and, their reasonings. Right. Uh, they assume that there's no science in the Bible. <laughs> they they've taken the lie of evolution. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. There's not one shred of proof for evolution. <laughs> not one. Not one. But. The people that teach it have a philosophical bias. Mm -hmm. And so what they've done is they've, they've taken God's, the way God created, mm -hmm. you know, uh, because you have the same person creating. That's right. And there's certain similarities. Right. And they've tried to say this is evolution. I got you. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so where, whereas uh, um, um, 
you know, the Bible, we see from the Bible that mm -hmm. God did create patterns. Mm -hmm. For instance, when he made, he made Adam, <laughs> That's then right. he made Eve. That's right. And he, he didn't start all over with Eve. <laughs> no, sir. He used the rib. Mm -hmm. And this is one of the, one of the lessons in, in my book. <laughs> they uh, can't handle it, so they can come up with something. Huh? Right. He, he's, it's, you have surgery. God put Adam in a deep sleep. Right. He gave him anesthesia. <laughs> yeah, I love it. I okay. Love it. Then he, he he sutured his wound so, so he he's wouldn't the bleed. First doctor that did surgery. Right. Right. Like then it. he took then he took Adam's rib and cloned it. <laughs> and we're trying to come up with cloning now in right, science. Right. Right. I got you. So he way ahead of the game. Right. Right. <laughs> He cloned it and slightly, all, you know, altered <laughs> yes, it, sir. you know, and uh, uh, and uh, well, took out the white chromosome or whatever and made yeah. a woman, right. which is a man with a womb. That's right. <laughs> and so, uh, you know, so he didn't start all over it. Right. He used the same pattern. I got you. So uh, m one time I was in, uh, when I was a student at U of M, I was talking to another chemistry major. <laughs> And he said to me, he said, the Bible says uh, God made a man from the dirt. And he said, um, how could God do that? And so I said, you call yourself a science major, you can't figure that out? Ooh. And I said, first of all, it doesn't say made from dirt, he said made him from the dust that's what he said. of the earth. <laughs> so, so correct him on that. Right. <laughs> I said, so everything that's made in the universe is made up of the elements. Mm -hmm. All these elements are found in the ground. So God took whatever he needed to make Adam mm -hmm. out of the ground and assembled him molecule by molecule, atom by atom. And he, he took the carbon, the nitrogen, the calcium, the magnesium, the copper, the, uh, the, uh, the oxygen, right. the, and all these other things and assembled and made a human being. And so, you know, some people think, well, God doesn't have to think about stuff. He just does it. Well, if he right. doesn't know what he's doing, and he's saying a magic spell. Exactly. You know, and what was come about has to, was predetermined by somebody else. Right. So God has to, in order to create, you know, do everything molecule by molecule, atom by atom. That's right. And, you know, uh, the Bible says I'm fearfully and wonderfully, wonderfully made. made. And so, uh, you know, we just, the answer's all there in the Word. Sure. And so, um, but, but as I say, we, it's, it's worse today because of the move of the atheist mm -hmm. and how they want to. Uh, and they got the prayers out of the schools. So right, right. They figured they're going to do some more. Right. <laughs> well, the Bible says my people are destroyed for, for lack, lack of knowledge. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Proverbs, I believe it's 21 and verse 30. The Bible says there is no, no. wisdom, mm -hmm. no counsel, That's right. no understanding That's against the Lord. That's so it. anytime you deviate from God's word That's it. and the wisdom of his word, you're doing something stupid. It's not an alternate idea. Mm -mm. It is a stupid idea. Because <laughs> there, there's no wisdom, there's no counsel, there, you know, there's no understanding right. against the Lord. Right. And so when, whenever you go against policies that are contrary to the word of God, no, right. you bring about destruction of society. Mm -hmm. And so the Bible says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. And this is why society is so messed up because we have gotten away from the word of God. Yes, sir. And so the the atheism has uh, infected our universities, our mm -hmm. colleges, mm -hmm. uh, where people are, are hostile to Christianity. Most Christians have no idea uh, how how hostile the environment is. I want to read a few quotes. Right. Uh, um, that these people, because um, we were talking about one guy, right? Right, right. Richard Dawkins. Dawkins. Right. was saying, who, who's a famous atheist and wrote a book called The God Delusion. Mm -hmm. uh, he, he he thinks that we as Christians don't have a right to raise uh, our children wow. in the Word of God. Uh, he said that he says, uh, and atheists. I mean, atheist educators are raising the question of whether parents should have control over their own children. Dawkins asks, how much do we regard children as being the property of their parents? It's one thing to say people should be free to believe whatever they like, but should they be free to impose their beliefs on their children? Is, is there something to be said for society stepping in? What about bringing up children to believe manifest falsehoods? Isn't it always a form of child abuse to label children as professors of beliefs that they are too young to have thought out? Now, if I ever meet Mr. Dawkins, uh, I would <laughs> well, like I would like to tell you that uh, uh, I didn't think it out. God dealt with me, and it was and I'm the one that got it before my parents got it. <laughs> and uh, so you know, you know that fallacy that you have is wrong. And there's so much more I like to say Absolutely. to him. Absolutely. Uh, you know, but now, it, and it, he's a 
is, and he's a well-known uh, atheist mm -hmm. who is infiltrating his ideals, right? And and then all this philosophy and and scientists. Yes, sir. That that's coming to to play now. Right, right. And so th there's such a move. I mean, w there was a case in uh, what was it Sweden mm -hmm. where uh, parents were homeschooling their kids. Mm -hmm. To raise them up in the, in, in Christianity, mm -hmm. and the government took Came the kids. In. Wow! The government took the took their took their child, and uh, as a matter of fact, they were going to because uh, one of them was from India. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think the mother was from India. They were going to India. The officials came on the plane wow. and took the kid from the parents. Wow! And they haven't seen their child in a, in a year. And uh, you know, it's just sad what's happening in our in our right, society. Right. It has become anti-Christian. Is is it has because they control uh, the academia. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, we'll read a few more things. Yeah, you had another one, right? Right, right. Uh, he said uh, this is from another man whose, whose name is f f uh, f uh, he's a psychologist named Nicholas Humph Humphrey. Okay, and he argued in a recent. Um, uh, convention talking to educators and teachers uh, he said that uh, he said they should work to secular teachers and professors should work to free children from the damaging influence of their parents religious instruction wow. parents correspondingly have no God-given license to uh, enculturate their children in whatever ways they personally choose no right to limit the horizons on their children's knowledge or to bring them up in the atmosphere of dogma and superstition or to insist that they follow the straight and narrow paths of their own faith. And he says secular professors and universities ought to arrange things so students who enter as bigoted, homophobic, religious fundamentalists will leave college with views more like our own. <laughs> and uh, he so they're said- They're gonna become the new parents. Right, right. <laughs> And uh, it's just horrible. We could go on and on, but uh, they, they say that they want to uh, 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 give the uh, students this worldview. He said, we want to sit, the parents who, uh, we want to take the fundamentalist children. They're the ones that's doing all the procreating. Mm -hmm. We want to, when they send their children to college, we're going to, uh, uh, that the, we as professors, we're going to go right on trying to discredit you mm -hmm. in the eyes of your children, trying to strip your fundamentalist religious community of dignity, trying to make your views seem rather, rather s silly than discussable. Wow. Now, I heard you say this one said that they don't have a God-given license. But right. I guess he's saying they do. I guess, I guess so. I guess so. <laughs> they God, don't, but we, we do. <laughs> right, right. We, we going to put our philosophy right. into their minds. I, I got here. <laughs> so, so, so there's a move in, in, in the colleges to mm -hmm. use, uh, to, to denigrate Christianity, to sure. denigrate faith, using science. Mm. And uh, they want to use science to do it. And then they also want to use, uh, encourage uh, sexual promiscuity. Okay. And to, you know, and to paint Christians as just uh, homophobic. And, right. Uh, um, which I, I don't believe that you can be homophobic, mm -hmm, really. Mm -hmm. Because homophobic means, ho a phobia means you have an unreasonable fear. Exactly. So I don't think you can have an unreasonable fear <laughs> of homosexuality. So, <laughs> so um, uh, <laughs> I like that. So, so, I don't so think basically, um, your argument is, or your, your, your argument is for them is, hey, the word of God is true. Mm -hmm. God exists. He's real. Mm -hmm. We can substantiate that. It's proven. You have nothing to prove for, so we're going to bless his name. We're right, going right. to stand on God, right, period. Right. But we're going to be right back because Chris Bird has it. He's singing just what he's talking about. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, blessed be his name, from the rising of the sun till the going down of the same, his 
his name is to be praised bless his holy name oh Blessed be his name From the rising of the sun Oh, all day long Till the going down of the same His name is to be praised Bless his holy Bless his name, bless his name. For don't you know that he has done great things? Bless his holy name. He has done great things for me. Bless his holy name. Yeah. Oh, bless the Lord. You know that he has done Bless his holy name He has done great things Bless his holy name Well, I will bless the Lord at all times Hey, I will bless the Lord telling you Chris Bird is off the chain. I'm telling bless his holy name. Do you know that he's still holy? I know that some think he isn't. I know that some thinking, hey, we're going to take you away from God, but God is still holy. And if you're just tuning in, you're tuning in to TCT Alive. I'm Pastor Anthony Shannon. I'm your host today, and we have been going through an exciting time in the Lord with our guest, Apostle Keith Barr. Now, before we left the break, we were talking, Apostle, and we were talking about um, these atheists and some of their philosophies and how they're pushing through scientists to, to really uh, take away the um, authenticity of the Word of God as right. well as Christianity. Right, and right. so as we were getting ready to go, we were, you were talking about even how there's philosophies is bringing in to, to counteract people to say, hey, they have a phobia, <laughs> homophobic, right, right. and we were talking about that. Let's pick it up from right there because okay. 
Um, in this part, we're going to talk about a lot of the books you dealt with because you got a book about overcoming lust. Right, and, right. And let's talk about, is that a form of lust? The, how, how did many of them get caught up? Because they're trying to tell them, no, you're born that way. You can't overcome it. But yet your book says, not only can you overcome it, right. let me explain it to you. Right, so let's right, talk right, about right, it. Right, right. Well, they want to use uh, uh, the science and and accuse the church of being sexually repressive. Uh, <laughs> sexually repressive. repressive. Right, wow. right. And uh, so they want to use and encourage kids to, to, to get in homosexuality mm -hmm. and to, uh, you know, they mock and make fun sure. about, they come pious and they come virgins and, mm -hmm. you know, in the street we would yes, say sir. they get turned out. That's right, know? that's right. And so, um, <laughs> uh, you know, what, that's one of the, actually it was one of my first books I did. Okay. Uh, was How to Be Free from Lust, because as okay. they, as a uh, young person, that was a big issue sure. for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people- And still is. It still <laughs> is. And so a lot of people don't know is, well, the Bible tells us that we never have to sin. <laughs> or never, we That's never right. have to sin. Mm -hmm. Okay, the Bible says, they have no temptation taken into you, but such as is common to man. And God is faithful who will not suffer you, to be allow tempted. you to be tempted right. above that which you are able. And will with every temptation, make, make a, a way, way to escape. escape. That's right. So if, you never have to sin, then that means you never have to lust. That's right. That's so, right. so lust is not our natural desire, but it is an amplification <laughs> of our natural desire. Right. Okay. Now tell them that again. It's an amplification. Ampl amplification. <laughs> it, it amplifies it. It, it multiplies. <laughs> That's right. Okay. And so Satan has his army, and he has, uh, um, uh, you know, the number of, of angels is a third of what God's mm -hmm. original mm -hmm. angels were. There's billions of, sure. billions of them. And there's, the armies are well organized, mm -hmm. and so some mm -hmm. of them operate as different spirits, spirits mm -hmm. of lust, mm -hmm. spirits of, uh, uh, of um, uh, one day the Lord told me, he said, son, uh, you know, a spirit of adultery can't work by itself. <laughs> and I said, I didn't even know it was a spirit of adultery. Wow. And, uh, and I said, what do you mean? And so he says, when a, when a spirit of adultery, a demon, Wow. That, it, that specializes in this comes to a man or woman who's mm -hmm. married mm -hmm. and tempts them to commit adultery. Mm -hmm. When he first comes, that person will resist it. Wow. And say, he'll come back. Well, he'll say, <laughs> I don't want to do that to my wife. Mm -hmm. I don't want to do that to my husband. I don't want to mess up my family. But then the spirit says, but, when, but then when a spirit of selfishness comes ah. with it, then they don't care. Ah. And they say, well, and I have to live through. that's what they say. Right. I mm -hmm. have to live my own life. I have mm -hmm. to. You know, this is a me first thing. So what do you say to them or a couple or a person? Maybe someone's listening right now. Right. Maybe someone's saying, but you don't understand, Pastor Barr. Mm -hmm. I'm in my situation now, mm -hmm. and she is this, he's that, and I don't care no more, and I, I, I see this other woman. What would you say to them? Well, first you need to realize that you're being, the, the devil is playing you, as we were saying. <laughs> you know, he's manipulating you. He's mm -hmm. using your own desires, whether you're talking about sexual fornication, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, adultery, whether you're talking about homosexuality. Mm. That is a demon spirit wow. that has assigned itself to you. It may have assigned itself to you from the time you're eight years old or mm -hmm. 10 years old. 20, 30 years for a demon is nothing for a demon. <laughs> you know, they've been around <laughs> here since, nothing since, cre since <laughs> creation. Like and they, they grow up with people. Mm. Okay, and well, so they, they grow drive. up with people. Explain that a little bit. Oh, okay, when you say they grow up with people, because I, I don't mean the demon grows. Sure. No, I know what you mean. But I mean they'll they'll hang around people right. their entire lives till right. they die and look for the next victim. Sure. And so, so is this where we get, when we attach, when people are saying, hey, you know, my father went to jail, his son went to jail, but his father went to jail. Would that be what they call the generational curses? Somebody's listening. It's going to help. Well, I think it's more generational ignorance <laughs> than generational curses. I like that. Okay, because uh, 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 I mean, you know, people have different spirits. That's right. You know, mm -hmm. uh, somebody may have an alcoholic spirit, mm -hmm. and they bring those demons and people around and stuff like right. that. And, and you know, so there's a spiritual element sure. to, to it. Absolutely. Okay. They even say, you know. Um, fun and spirits at mm -hmm. a lot of nightclubs or whatever. Right, right, right. <laughs> and so, um, yeah, so, you, so you, have, you have that element. Mm -hmm. But I don't necessarily be, believe that people's under, you, you know, that you got to deal with something because your 
Okay. Father did it or your grandfather. Okay. You know, I, I don't agree with that because I believe the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us sure, from sure. all sin. Right. Now there's some generational <laughs> ignorance, you know, that we may have picked up and learned from sure. our fathers or right. whatever that we have to deal with, that we have to change our way mm -hmm, of thinking. Mm -hmm. And the Bible says, be not conformed to the world, but right. be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, but anyway, this with this 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 book, uh, How to Be Free from Lust, mm -hmm. it goes through and it tells people how to be and explains how uh, the demon of lust operates okay. and people accept it. And mm -hmm. so if you, but the Bible says, if you resist the devil, He'll flee. he will flee. So there's an escape. That's right. They that's, don't have to say right. yes. <laughs> one, one friend of mine just passed away, mm -hmm. uh, great father in the gospel. Okay. okay. But he was a homosexual for many years. Wow. At eight years old, he went to uh, visit someone and he went in there, a normal boy. Mm -hmm. The woman prayed for him and imparted, mm -hmm. you know, a, a homosexual spirit on him. Wow. And he left out of there feeling like he was a woman trapped in a, in a, in a boy's body of okay. a man. And he was so bound, he's from St. Louis, that he, you know, when he finally got saved at like 21, mm -hmm. he had been with many men. He would run the streets of St. Wow. Louis naked to catch whatever man he could. Mm -hmm. He literally hated women because wow. they were something that he was not. And uh, and so you know, finally he was delivered, mm -hmm. and uh, it's, you know it's kind of a long story. And uh, God saved him, delivered him, and he cast that spirit out of him. Wow. You know, he got married. His wife was the first woman he was ever with, and wow. they had six kids. And uh, he, he was a powerful prophet, man wow. of God. Wow. As a matter of fact, I heard about, and he had a ministry dealing with mm -hmm. homosexuals. Wow. And I heard about one of his 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 miracles when I was in um, and and in a medical uh, one of my biology classes at okay. U of M. Wow. And so, because they were talking about how life would find a way, and they, there was this one person who um, uh, didn't have ovaries on one side, mm -hmm. didn't have fallopian tubes on the other side, and uh, something happened, and it was impossible for him to get pregnant. And so the eggs over here got a to the t tube <laughs> over there. And so he said, must have went through the bloodstream and all this. We knew how to. I said, no, it was a man of God that prayed <laughs> yes, for somebody. Indeed. And so what it was was uh, he was ministering in the service, mm -hmm. and uh, a. a uh, a uh, woman brought her daughter who was a, a lesbian and in a lesbian relationship wow. and uh, she got uh, 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 she you know she got saved in the service mm. and she she told the woman she was leaving and the woman said if you leave me I'm gonna kill you wow. and so when she came downstairs with her bags she shot her in the womb wow and so and that's what happened and so you know she almost died but God gave her a miracle and and prayed for her, and then she got married. And mm. but the doctor said that they would never have a child, medically impossible. And God gave them a child. Wow! You know, and this is one of the things. Uh, uh, one of my one of my books. Uh, Will God leave a record? We talk right. about. That's right. Okay, and and I talk about and a, a compassionate. Now, what made you write that particular book? Okay, because people always challenge me how you know the Bible mm -hmm, is true. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so I, my, my book is just talking about an impassionate, a compassionate, more intelligent God would have left something for us, some type of record that we like, would know like his word is true. Do. Right. What, you know, what he wants us to exactly. do. Exactly. And it would have to be some means that we can verify it. Mm -hmm. And so, and so in this book, I give some of the archaeological, historical, and scientific proof of the Bible. Sure. And then the fourth category is it works. <laughs> you know, you can come with me with all the stuff you want, <laughs> right. but I got a relationship with him, and I know I know what's true. Exactly. You know, and so w one of the things that going back to the atheists, they want to create this climate that we are silly. Uh, we're delusional and, and, and a dismissive attitude mm -hmm. that we don't even talk about, you know, we're not sure. even worth, worthy of discussion. And so this is why I, one of the reasons I uh, wrote this book, Amazing Scientific Secrets of okay. the Bible. And that's your, that's your current book. Right, right. right. Now, was, now, before we get to that one, you do have another one, right, from Genesis to Armageddon. Armageddon and beyond. Right. Now, did, was that a precursor to this book as you got into that? Uh, Genesis to Armageddon and beyond, God started dealing with me about that in high school. Wow. And so I would start praying that God would write a book that could be made into a movie mm. that would show you in all your glorious power. <laughs> that would be like Star Wars and Superman meets right, King right. of Kings. Wow. <laughs> you know, and I wanted to, to, you know, to be a novel, be exciting. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, as I start praying, the Lord started telling me, you do it, you do it. And I thought <laughs> at the time I was getting wrong signals, you mm -hmm. know, because I say, who am I? Right. Who am I spiritually? I don't have the knowledge. I see. You know, and so. Um, you know, because I knew I wanted to explain creation, mm -hmm. exactly how did God create the universe. Sure. And nobody had figured that out. Right. And uh, so, um, 
uh, the more I prayed, the stronger it got for me to do it. And mm -hmm. I, I stopped praying, <laughs> you know, because I said, I, the devil's trying to trick me. Mm -hmm. And uh, in 1989, when they came out with The Last Temptation of Christ, mm -hmm. I said, Lord, here you are getting ready to come back the, the second time, and the world don't know why you came the first. <laughs> and I got the burden for the movie, and I started praying. Wow. And so the Lord said, you, you know, as I prayed, he said, you do it. You write this book. And uh, that could be made into a movie. And I, so I said, uh, I said, I can't write. He said, yes, you can. I said, no, I can't. He said, yes, you can. He said, what'd you get in English? And I said, I always got A's in English. And so he said, you can write it. I said, I said speak English. You're supposed to get A's in English. You know? <laughs> and, but I was so, so, such a hardcore science person mm -hmm. that I didn't consider, I see. you know, like a football player don't really consider a tennis player as an athlete, mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. know? And so I never paid or attention. Or a swimmer. <laughs> right, a swimmer. You know, so I never paid attention to my writing skills. Sure. And so when I sat down to, to do this book. Mm -hmm. and this book came after, though, the other book, right? Well, actually, they kind of came together. Okay, together. They, they came together. But the first book was the uh, How to Get Out of Lust book. That yeah, you were talking yeah, about. Okay. okay. And uh, so. Um, and this one is thicker. Right, right. <laughs> and this is the third edition of Genesis okay. I'm getting and Beyond. All right. Because I keep getting more information and I new you. stuff. Expanding, Expanding. and evolving. All right. And so on, this, on the, uh, when I sat down to fast and pray. Mm -hmm. And uh, about it, and I'm thinking, okay, I'm gonna have, this is gonna take maybe 40 days, you know. Mm -hmm. And I went on long fast, 11 days, I think was my longest at that point. Wow. But I had, but, um, so, but the first few minutes I sat down and prayed, and I'm reading in Genesis, and mm -hmm. the Lord says, uh, uh, I'm reading where it says, uh, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, mm -hmm. and the earth was all form and void. And then it says, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters. Yes. So there was waters up above the firmament and, and the waters below the firmament. <laughs> yes. And I knew firmament meant space. Mm -hmm. And I read that and I said, Lord, no way. No way am I going to make anybody believe in some water up above the earth someplace. <laughs> I said, now if your word says it, I have to accept it. Mm -hmm. And I said, but I don't understand it. And I said, why did you make the earth underneath water anyway? And this is probably the most detailed the Lord had ever spoken to me in the sure. longest. He said, he said, son, remember your studies in nuclear physics. Any activity on a nuclear level, whether fission or fusion, creates a tremendous amount of heat. So much heat that it would have taken many, many years for to the earth cool to cool off. off, as the scientists say. But I created the earth underneath water, so it would be cool, cool in two off. days. And so only brilliance can come up with that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so that what must be God. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so after I had that, mm -hmm. then then it all fell in place. Absolutely. Because I realized, you know, and I looked for scriptures and this Bible says by wisdom, God had founded the earth mm -hmm. by understanding hath he established the That's heavens. Correct. And so I found the whole process for creation, how he did it in six days. Wow. And so that's in that book. It reads like a, many people have said that's the best book they've ever read in their lives. Wow. People that, you know, they read it, couldn't put mm -hmm, it down. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, one of the reviews so I got on Amazon. So they it was not just you. Right, right. People that read it understand right. that you've had an encounter with the divine. Right. Because no human in his right intellectual self can, can, can explain can, it that with that clarity, even what you just said. Right, not. right. No and, way. Right. And so I get into, it's even more, but I don't want to take up all my time no, explain, no, you, explain, explaining that. Yeah. Uh, but it's just, it's just yeah. brilliant. It's but, but here's, here's the, here's the, the and I've had scientists that, that have checked it out and they can't refute it. They, they don't refute it. They, go they, they don't, I mean, it it's scientifically sound. Sure. Absolutely. What I'm saying. They're like, man, this is good. Yeah. yeah. Because you, you study science. Right. Right. You, you, you studied it. You know what you're talking about. And now you bridge the gap to bring it together. And that's what someone needs. Right. I mean, right. If, if Einstein said at, at 12, he wanted to know what a picture would look like, what he would look like in a picture running at the speed of light. Mm -hmm. And it triggered him years later right. to come up with the E equal, I mean, E C equals, I mean, E equals MC, MC squared. squared. Right. He comes up with, hey, this is the equation for light. Uh -huh. Then he comes up with matter and light are the same, but slow down. Right. Surely God could do you right. and you are a man of God. Right, right. <laughs> You know, uh, George Washington Carver had over 250 patents. 250 50 patents. patents. That still have not been broken today, right? Right, right. I, I, I don't know if he has a world with the record. the peanut and... Uh, right, right, all the things he did with the peanut. Sure. And somebody asked him, what was the source? And he said God was his, was his source. Uh, many people don't know that his, his Bible class 
had more uh, was a more popular class at Tuskegee than his uh, than his, his science, science class. classes. And so, so they were more interested. <laughs> right. Oh wow, that's and awesome. so the, and so uh, somebody asked him. Well, the New York Times criticized him mm. for saying no self-respecting scientist would would attribute this to God. And, wow. and so, uh, and George now, let Washington, me ask you that real quick. Why is it that way for scientists? Why is it so hard for them to really re receive or believe of, of God? Is it because they can't touch it? Is it because they can't prove it? What is it that pride. makes them? <laughs> pride. Pride. And it, it, you know, Bob said pride going before destruction yes, and the Holy Spirit before a, a, a fall. Okay. They view themselves as very important people. I got you. You, you, you know, they, they view themselves as the most important now people in the world. I got you. You know, as, as a matter of fact, Frederick Nietzsche. That makes sense to me. You know, he says that, he said Christians invented morality just to stop the powerful men from using their talents in subjugating the other people. <laughs> Say that again. I know you're listening to this. <laughs> right, one. right. Please listen to this. If you're just tuning in, you're tuning in to TCT Alive. We have Apostle Pastor Keith Barr. Listen, at the bottom of the screen is a phone number. You need to call it. The prayer partners are waiting for you. But listen, this right here will change the game. You got to say that again. Okay. Frederick Nietzsche, you know, a world, I mean, a famous, you know, atheist, a philosopher. Yes. Said, says, that that Christians mm. invented morality to invented stop morality. right to stop <laughs> powerful men wow. from ex, from using their rightful gifts and talents in the subjugation of other people. Wow! You know he, he says Christianity is so, the is the religion of losers. Wow! Amazing. And so you know you have that pride, that arrogance. So these people are filled with self-importance, and. Uh, and so they, I guess they would feel like if God would speak to anybody, he'd speak to them. Wow. But the Bible says God resisted the proud, Resist the but proud. giveth more grace to, to the, the humble. humble. <laughs> and so, uh, you so know, he, the Bible says the fear of the him. Lord is the beginning <laughs> of wisdom. Of wisdom. Yes, you know, sir. and that's why Dawkins and these guys can't understand, because you got to humble yourself before yes, God, sir. and then he will touch you, he reveal himself right. to you. Because science used to say the world was flat. They used to always talk about it's flat. But the flat. Bible never says that. He never said. He said it's a circle of the earth. Right, right. And they found that to and, be and so. And in Job, Job it says, one of the things, chapters in my book, Bible says, uh, uh, and that was written 3,500 years ago. He's way before that. It says uh, uh, <laughs> that God made the earth and he hung it upon nothing. That's right. And so, you know, whereas other religions like the Hindus said that the earth is like a disc mm -hmm. uh, that's on the back of four four giant <laughs> elephants, the, the elephants on the back of a giant turtle mm -hmm. that swims across the cosmos. Mm -hmm. The Bible says God sits upon the circle of the earth. You know, uh, uh, the Bible says uh, uh, he laid a compass on the mm -hmm. face of the deep. It says, you know, all around, you know, and, and then and then in Job, it talks about the earth turning. Mm -hmm. He says, when God looked at the earth turning into the sunlight, it's like clay that's turning right. into the seal. That's right. And so, you know, the Bible makes, and that's what those amazing scientific statements. Right. Uh, now that led you into that. Right, right. Okay. Secrets of the Bible. Uh, because, you know, I explain it this way. This, this book, what this book would do when you talk to atheists mm -hmm. and unbelievers, I mean, this could mess up their world. I think the knowledge that's in this book is one of the most important books that, that's ever come out in, the, you know, aside from the sure, Bible. absolutely. I mean, because it will affect their whole world view mm -hmm. and, and turn the, the intelligentsia world upside down. <laughs> this even affected our political uh, mm -hmm. parties. Uh, you know, we just had a uh, uh, big both thing. Both parties out. Right. A uh, uh, big brouhaha at the Democratic mm -hmm. Party. They had a fit because he was putting God-given talents in there. Okay. They took it all out. Uh, right. They took it out. They said, and, take it out. And then when they put it back in, the no's were louder than the yes. Yes, indeed. And, and so, um, but, you know, this, so this book gives scientific statements, mm -hmm. okay, that prove that the Bible is true. Some all of them. All that you've taken from the Bible. Right. right. Yeah. And it's not all of them. It's more. I saved no, the rest of them for, for, the, for the next <laughs> part book. Part two. Right, right. <laughs> you know how they come out with part one, one part, part two. two. <laughs> Transformers. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, um. Uh, so, uh, you know, it's just so much information. And these statements are so powerful that one or two of them alone, uh, you have to say that either God told these Jews this, 
This information is so profound because some of it we're just now discovering. Absolutely. You know, we just Give us a couple technology. examples. Give us some examples because in this book, and I, I had a chance to look through it, is that you go to prove a lot of different statements that Job had, God gave him, and, and then you begin to prove it from a scientific perspective. Okay. And the argument is, okay, how would he know that? Right, right. Way in, right. But we're just now uncovering it today. Right. And you have to say either God told them or that they, we have access to, they had access to computers, weather satellites back then. Back then. Wow. Okay. Now the scriptures it says in Job 38, and I think it's verse 20, mm -hmm. it said, by which way is the light parted, which causeth the east wind to blow upon the earth. Mm. Now how could Job know you could break up sunlight? Okay. <laughs> he wouldn't have. He wouldn't have known that. God and there's an element it. of sunlight called invisible infrared rays. Mm. So you can't even see them. Wow. And that's what causes the sun uh, the uh, shines down from the sun, give off infra invisible infrared rays that makes the 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 wind to blow, because the heat is the engine that drives uh, the weather on this planet. Mm -hmm. Okay, then you go another one, uh, following it, uh, it with that, is in Ecclesiastes. You know, thousand years later, Ecclesiastes mm -hmm. says the wind goes towards the south. <laughs> okay, where it turns about into the north, where it whirleth continually, and the wind continues on its circuits. <laughs> Okay, now we read that. That's one of the scriptures we just, like a speed bump, we just go over. Okay. <laughs> it's in there. I know it's in there. Right. What does it mean? Okay, because the earth is round and bulges at its equator, and we have a diagram for this mm -hmm. in my book. Mm -hmm. Okay, warm air rises. As this warm air is rising, sure. okay, because the heat has excited the molecules, the molecules are moving, you know, so it's rising, sure, it's lighter. Sure. It goes up into the atmosphere. It would want to cool and come back down. But there's new air rushing up underneath it. Just imagine yourself coming out of the stadium. Yes. And then you want to go back in, but that crowd is pushing you forward. You can't do it. Okay, so the, the so, so the uh, the air is pushed towards the poles mm -hmm. where it whirls continually as the earth is spinning underneath it. Mm -hmm. And then it continues on its circuits. Wow. So there's no way that Job could have known that. Right. No, that, that's Solomon. Solomon. With, 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 in today's time, right. what we're talking about with our technology right. back then. He would have either had access to weather, weather satellites, either God told him, or they had access to computers, weather satellites, infrared cameras, and all this technology, and never used it, you know, for any other purpose, even for self. So that's just totally ridiculous. <laughs> you know, uh, another one is in Psalms. You talked about the deep. Right, the right. Deep. And so, uh, and this is one of the misquoted scriptures in the Bible, where the Bible says, deep color than the deep. It is not talking about deep, folks. We're, we're <laughs> concerned about people's ignorance. That's why we're here today. Right. <laughs> it says deep is talking about the ocean. Ocean is calling the ocean. And it tells you what you heard at the sound of thy water spouts. Uh, uh, and it says, and it's been all, it said, all thy waves and billows sweep over me. Okay, so what we found out, first I think it was in 48, and then 54, it was really discovered with the Navy, uh, that there's this channel underneath the, the waves, starting at 2,500 feet below the waves, where sound just travels. And it goes for like to 15, uh, over 15,000 feet. Due to the pressure and the, uh, the, the chemical composition of it, and that's how whales are able to talk all these thousands of miles. It's not because they're just the loudest creature on the earth, which they are, <laughs> okay? Uh, but um, but it, they were not loud enough for the sound to carry like that. Mm -hmm. Is they go down and they make use of this channel that God created for them. As a matter of fact, the Navy wanted to see if they could make use of it. And the Navy calls this channel sound oscillating frequency alternating response channel. Uh, uh, then they set off a depth charge mm -hmm. and they was C4 and they heard it 7,000 miles away with no signal degradation. Wow. And so that's, if you go, you know, from one- Way before th this fiber optic that we tried. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> and there's, there's just no way they could have known that. Absolutely. Because no, no diver could have dived, a human that, diver, right. and more lived. than 100 feet. Absolutely. Okay. And so, um, the Bible says a lot about the ocean. It says, uh, the waters are hid with the stone and the face of the deep is frozen. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, you read that, you, what, what's he talking about? Sure. You know, but uh, it, what's the characteristic if you hid underneath the stone as big as you are? <laughs> it's going to crush you. Right. And it's dark. Okay. And so, but they could, couldn't know that the ocean was dark because light went down a thousand feet 
10 times deeper than anybody could dive. Wow. Okay. And then, so they didn't know about the pressure because they couldn't go deep enough to experience the pressure. They ran out of air first. <laughs> and so, and, but then it says, I read it, it said, the face of the deep is frozen. I said, Lord, what, what are you talking about? Uh, and we have just found out that uh, there's frozen methane that comes out of the ocean floor. And it's all over the ocean. There's more frozen methane that's, uh, you know, that's in the ocean sure, than it is absolutely. than there is methane on the land. Mm. And uh, so there's a whole, uh, 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 you know, these group of animal uh, creatures that that's live they, right. that, that live off that. You know, mm -hmm. there's ice worms mm -hmm. and other mm -hmm. things mm -hmm. that live off this They're frozen methane. There, right. So you know, here the Bible said this. You know, so you you gonna tell me uh, they had access to deep sea diving equipment? You know. <laughs> So, so, you know, these scriptures, what I like to describe it is like the old Indiana Jones movie, the first one, okay? <laughs> if you're talking to atheists, okay? You remember that, that one scene where uh, Harrison Ford ran out and, it, and, uh, and uh, parted and there was this big, uh, big guy with a turban and he pulls out the sword and he's just waving it and waving it and you think, oh, what's he going to do? What's he going to do with that? And he just takes out his gun, bam, and shoots you like that. That's the way these scriptures are. One shot, you can just take one of these lessons, remember one or two of them, and you blow the atheist away at the whole argument of them trying to uh, pervert the minds of your own children that you have raised, that you have fed, that you have clothed, that you have sacrificed. Wow. You know? Unbelievable. I'm telling you, this is why you need to reach out to Pastor Apostle Keith Barr. His information is on the screen. The Bible already said it in Hosea 4 and 6, my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. Listen, I'm concerned about your ignorance. I want you to get the information so that you can get some revelation and then you can begin to saturate yourself. Apostle, thank you so much again right. for coming. We really appreciate you, sir. Thank and, God. And, and also these books are available on Amazon. All right, on Amazon.com. Uh, go on and make it happen. Avail yourself to it. And please, please continue to tune in to TCT. So into this good ground and continue to pray for, I tell you, our special guest, Apostle Keith Barr. Listen, I want you to continue to l remember the prayer partners are waiting for you. Call them, get them in on your situation, all right? Read the Word of God, but most importantly, find you a good place that's teaching the Word with revelation, and God will bless you real good. I also want you to understand that God is still performing miracles in 2012. Jesus Christ, He loves you. A, I think today's have proven so much that God exists, He's real, and the Bible is true. Be, hey, if you doubt it, when you make you a world, make you a man, pull out of the man a woman, <laughs> deal with all that, then I believe you. Until then, we're going to believe the word of God. I'm Pastor Anthony Shannon. I'm your host on TCT Alive. But before I go, I want you to tell somebody what you've heard today. Tell somebody that you too are now a believer. And if you're an atheist, get this material, read it for yourself, and then guess what? You'll say, Jesus is Lord. Garth and Tina want you to be a partner in this ministry. Please send your best love gift today to TCT, PO Box 1010, Marion, Illinois, 62959. In Canada, please send your best love gift to TCT, PO Box 1220, Fort Erie, Ontario, L2A 5Y2. This has been a TCT production.